Over the next couple of days in science, we're going to discuss how do forces act. Before we begin, I would like to go over some vocabulary here and here throughout these videos. First is force. Force is a push or pull. If you've ever climbed on a jungle gym or pulled yourself up on monkey bars, you've used force by pulling yourself up with your hands and pushing yourself up with your feet. Um, the next word is motion. Uh, motion is a change in position. For instance, when you throw a ball, it is now in motion. On Friday, we're going to discuss speed, friction, and gravity. I'm going to define those now, though, and then remind them of, you of them again on Friday. Speed is the distance an object moves in a period of time. When we hear the word speed, we often think of how fast like a car is going, and we measure that in miles per hour. Miles being the distance that it goes in one hour. Um, in gym or at recess, when you race a friend, you might compare your speeds to know who ran faster. Friction is a force that acts when two surfaces rub together. And then finally, gravity is a force that pulls things toward the center of the earth. And that's the reason why you're able to not just float around. All right, we are next going to discuss how forces change motion. Notice this picture of the woman playing tug of war with her dog. They are using force to try and get the leash away from one another. They're pulling it in different directions. And even though they're pulling very hard, the leash doesn't seem to be moving. So when forces are equal, which again is when you pull or push something, the object the force is being applied to, which in this case is the leash, it does not move. So if the dog's force on the leash were greater than the woman's force on it, it would be unequal and the dog would end up pulling the woman toward itself. Next, I want you to think about when you play a game of catch. When you throw a baseball toward someone, you are applying force to the baseball, which puts the ball in motion toward the other person. The ball moves because of an unequal force, unlike the leash between the dog and woman that we saw in the last slide. The mass of the ball also affects its motion. A bowling ball and baseball have different mass, so if you would have to use more force to put the bowling ball in motion than a baseball. So the greater the mass of an object, the greater the force needed to put that object in motion. You can predict how far an object will move based on the amount of force applied to the object. So if you're playing a game of kickball, a big powerful kick will apply more force than a small gentle kick. So the greater the force, the greater the change in motion. Imagine a game of volleyball. In order for the game to start, the player has to use enough force to hit the ball over the net, but not too much force or else the ball could go out of bounds. A player will also use force to change direction of the ball. A player can set the ball for a teammate or spike the ball, which causes it to move so fast that no one on the opposite team can hit it. A spike requires more force than a set because there is a greater change in motion of the ball than when you're just passing it to a teammate as a set. Next, we're going to discuss kinds of motion. When you are riding in the car with your parents on a straight road like 26 or 31, the speed and direction of the car is mostly constant. But if you travel on a curvy road, the car's motion is variable, which means it changes or varies. Look at the model train on the slide. When the train reaches a curve in the track, the direction of its motion changes. It may slow down as it gets around the curve and it does not go in a straight line. Sometimes motion has a pattern, like when you dribble a basketball. You push the ball down, it hits the ground, and bounces back up to your hand. Then you push it again and it goes back up and again and so on. It is following a pattern. 
Motion that changes in a regular pattern is called periodic motion. You can also see periodic motion in a rocking chair or a swing set. I would like for you to refer back to this video as many times as necessary. I am also going to include a short article for you to read to figure out what the difference between mass and weight is because I did mention um, a few slides back about the difference in mass between a bowling ball and a baseball. Some of you might be wondering what I mean by that. Um, if you have any questions, I would like for you to please reach out to me on Zoom or in my email. Have a great day, guys.